Hello, today for review I've got uh, Kane's new flagship single dynamic driver in air monitors, model YD1 or it, it has nickname Fantasy. It's second in air monitors created by Kane and uh, I, unfortunately I didn't have a chance to test the first one, it was uh, multi-balanced armatures YB4, but actually I don't think that humanity lost much without my review, but I'm really glad to have an opportunity to test their new model, because here Kane implemented uh, fully their own vision in terms of design, in terms of sound, packaging, so everything. And uh, Kane, uh, actually, you know, it's a company that uh, never tries to follow the common approach, even if it, uh, uh, if the product looks a bit unusual, it's, they still will do that and they, uh, pref they have their own unique style. If you've seen, uh, I don't know, if you've seen N8, N6 Mark II or something like that, you understand what I'm talking about. And Fantasy is not an exception. Actually speaking about N6 II, they announced a really great limited edition and new audio model with uh, uh, rail with R2R uh, multi-bit uh, uh, digital tonal converter and actually it's a really good or interesting offer I really going to get one for review not sure how soon maybe not as soon as I want but anyway but let's go back to the fantasy it's single dy dynamic driver model 10.2 millimeter dynamic driver if I remember right with beryllium plated diaphragm, with uh, some complicated uh, acoustic cavities and with some uh, sophisticated magnet system, so not a regular usual driver. And of course it implemented uh, in a Keynes traditional design. Uh, so price is $800 uh, and uh, let's have a closer look. Package is nice, you know, when you're creating uh, earphones with price tire going close to $800 and especially when you want to be in that, in that wave of uh, uh, single dynamic driver models returning actually you need to implement something in terms of design and you can see interesting gray color multi-layered box with some cuts showing the inner box even some hole to simplify the opening on the back side as usual uh, there are technical specifications, so 108 decibels of sensitivity and uh, 37 ohms of impedance, 2 pin 078 uh, connector, accessory set described here, so all that stuff. As usual that gold embossed letters are not that easy to read. <coughs> so let's remove the outer part and here is internal box and unusual approach continues because it opens in few different ways so first opening is here and second one is here and on top you can uh, get earphones themselves you can get this top part and grab in air monitors easily so great unpacking experience because you don't have to try to scratch them out of this uh, holder and uh, accessories they've organized in the, into two layers box. So top one is filled with tips, vocal, uh, balanced uh, form, basic, du dual flange as usual. So huge set of tips making you think what you need. Do you need vocal or you need balance or you need bass or, or you need some other option. In this case you can uh, get different tips for left and right ear but of course i'm kidding don't do that it's it's obviously silly so storage box actually not it's not a box it's nice leather pouch looks pretty fancy but it's uh, soft so it won't protect your earphones from some harsh strikes but anyway it's good for everyday storage and bottom part so you'll get cable and you'll get accessories. And now they made me wonder actually what accessories could be here if we already seen all that stuff on the layer above. So let's 
get cable out. And in the accessories, cleaning tool, short clip, uh, pouch for clean, uh, for cleaning and uh, polishing, and actually pilers. Not sure why four, or actually I've got why four, so probably to operate with this screwable filters. So that's the only guess. Actually, I don't know what to do with these pilers anyway. But let me pause this video. I will clean up table a little bit and we will continue talking about the design. And of course about the design, it's just simple and at the same time beautiful. Kane decided not to overdo with some fancy stuff. They just put the triangle-like cut on the face plates and implemented nice ergonomic shape uh, overall for shells. Uh, uh, they made of stainless steel and uh, they look beautiful. Of course, this mirror polished surface will gather a bit of fingerprints, but uh, it's a price you pay for that beautiful look. They even put some protective films, but let me remove them. So just see how fancy it looks you know it's that case when some simple idea nicely implemented implemented changes the perception so no uh, artist painted painted face plates no some complex shapes just basic triangle and uh, mirror like finish and this well defined edges do the rest creating the look that uh, is unique and doesn't remind anything else of course, in terms of design, they are great. Build quality is also really great. They feel really solid, so nice, nice uh, finish. Inner part is made really ergonomic. Everything is smooth, so that's another great idea. So all that uh, angles are on the faceplate only, and inner part is absolutely smooth and uh, feels uh, really well. Uh, polished and uh, meaning good comfort and fit into ears only possible issue with this model it's when you want to wear them when it's cold outside so in that case metal shells would be not the greatest idea but uh, that is not their fault it, it's the same for every metal in air monitors they have a pretty well extended spout, meaning good uh, passive sound isolation. It's even slightly above average. There is a lip for holding the tips and a protective grill. So that uh, gives good overall experience. Tips are holding really well. You just need to push them all to the end, meaning good secure fit. And of course you can do tip rolling, but actually stock set of tips will be enough for almost all circumstances. Two vent holes, one is here and second one is here. And the cable is made replaceable. They decided to use almost classical two pin connector with slightly recessed pins. So finding some third party cable if you want to will be easy, but I don't think that it will make much sense because Kane used some good uh, oxy oxygen free copper cable and with silver plated copper inside so some sophisticated hybrid wiring and here they are so this connector is for right earpiece and here how it's look with cable there is ear hook but no memory wire as usual it just reduces the microphonic effect and holds cable around your ear Pretty soft, but uh, doing its job nicely. And uh, cable is average in terms of softness, slightly softer than average, but not uh, super soft, but at the same time ergonomics is good. So it, it doesn't feel uh, uh, filmsy or something like that. Nicely braided and goes to the splitter. You can see that even for the splitter they've implemented the, some kind of similar design. And after splitter it goes to, to the jack. Here they decided to use regular 3.5mm jack without some kind of replaceable connection or something like that. 
multi-angled uh, polished uh, steel that accompanies the look of this model. I really like that combination of metal, so looks really really fancy. And so you can see in terms of design, accessory set, presentation, box, and all that other exterior stuff, it's done really great. And of course about the sound, I gave them about 40 hours of burn-in and there were slight changes in sound during first uh, 20 hours or so, so if you decide to get them, you can spend like uh, one day burning them in, but actually, you know, there won't be big issue if you'll start listing them right now. It's not that case, like if you don't burn them in, your ears will fall off. Let's have some player on the table. For examples, I will use Kane and 6 Mark II, just regular aluminium one, no fancy, uh, fancy titanium version. I use it with uh, T01 audio module, didn't have E01 and E02, but T01 is like, uh, I like it, it's, uh, uh, it gives you perfect sense of Kane's uh, house sound that they're trying to implement in other products. And uh, as uh, probably everyone expects, uh, this model is, uh, is not traditional in terms of tuning. Uh, Kane decided to create a model that highlights the technical aspects of the sound, that uh, makes everything a bit more engaging than it is in real life. And actually it's a good idea, like, you know, who needs dull sound? So, they are close to monitoring, they are pretty mid-forward, but um, they are not uh, absolutely monitoring. They have a slightly boosted bass, but not much, and they have accented mids, and uh, even without uh, paying attention at frequency response, they uh, putting a lot of accents on small tiny nuances and details in the music, making everything more charming and more engaging. But at the same time, they don't try to nitpick all issues and uh, uh, to sound super critical. Anyway, let's talk about everything step by step. So, bass is slightly accented, but accent isn't big. It's not a bass heavy model in terms of quantity, so... Uh, and actually I like that, because uh, I'm not a huge fan of uh, super bass boosted uh, tunings. And if you need that, you can adjust equalizer and you will get more low frequencies. But here the can selected a proper amount, because they're not uh, bass light, they're not uh, bass natural, just slight uh, bump on the low frequencies to make everything uh, funnier and meatier. But uh, what is important here, it's a good fast dynamic driver that delivers really good resolution and that means that you will get a lot of that small nuances and details that characterize uh, high-end sound, that characterize uh, that flagship models that distinguish them from like uh, middle segment. And you will get uh, all that small details and nuances like more wood, uh, more brass, uh, more strings, all that nuances, this model highlights beautifully. Depth is really good, uh, almost close to maximum, and it has a nice good impact. So, they sound uh, good for this electronic music too. But you know, it's for me, because I'm like, uh, electronic music isn't a big share of my media library. If you have a lot of them, probably you need something more bass boosting. But uh, as I have not a lot of uh, such uh, tracks in my collection and uh, I prefer to think about them like more uh, intelligent type of electronic music of all kinds, uh, I, uh, they have enough bass for me and thanks to that tightness and impactfulness and uh, good depth of low frequencies they deliver nice pump and so I satisfy with their quantity. But I... Uh, I'm trying to highlight the fact that it's more a matter of subjective taste, of course. For me it's a really good amount of low frequencies, but um, some people like more. And as a first example, it's Casey Abrams. Uh, and what is the name of this track? Ah, yeah, Never Knew. So it's acoustic bass and good vocal and you understand why this track is here this model plays this acoustic bass 
greatly greatly you will get the sense of strings moving and all that other stuff and second track it's uh, ukrainian folk electronic uh, project uh, onuka actually i'm recording this video during the eurovision finals and uh, ukraine representative is another uh, folk electronic music it's collective go a and uh, to be honest i'm a fan of such music i'm not a fan of electronic music at all but add there a bit of ukrainian folk and you you got me so onuka is a great project i really recommend you find some of their videos because uh, even if you don't like such music you can probably enjoy the video because a uh, lot of fancy costumes good production and so on and this track has really huge big electronic beat with lo that goes deep and that this model thanks to nice impact will give you that uh, joyful uh, sense of uh, low frequencies but at the same time lot of uh, folk instruments lot of interesting samples and uh, lot of voice samples and this model delivers that nicely mid frequencies are a bit uh, actually probably accented not a proper word here but uh, like uh, you know accent accented means frequency response like boosted uh, means but here they are highlighted so this model tries to highlight a little bit emotions try to highlight uh, small nuances of the record try to give more of that to you it's not uh, boosting uh, it's not adding additional weight so it's important to have properly recorded tracks in this aspect and they're not uh, trying to highlight emotions too much and actually it's surprising for kane because usually their tuning is like more emotions boosting but select the proper player and you will get that so nice synergy and combination anyway they're trying to highlight that small nuances they're trying to sound technical they sometimes even close to the balanced armatures but they don't sound that dry as balanced armatures it's still a dynamic driver that will deliver proper weight just as it recorded and uh, that will give you a good sense of uh, body for the vocal for the instruments good uh, feel and saturation upper mids are slightly boosted traditionally to give a bit more presence bit more clarity and so on so nice properly tweaked tuning in terms of uh, materials they're not super critical for the quality of record but still on the critical side so uh, keep that in mind but you know what sense in buying 800 dollar in-ear monitors and listening something poorly recorded but with uh, properly recorded stuff they will sound really engaging imaginary stage is really good it's spacious and both in width and in depth with nice layering so stage is really good maybe not at the flagship uh, size but still noticeably bigger than vast majority of other stuff on the market uh, okay, I'm a bit uh, used too loud word. Not waste majority stuff on the market. I didn't test a lot of models, so but uh, uh, bigger than waste majority of models I've tested. But of course, flagships is still uh, still better. But anyway, really good staging here. And uh, as a first example, it's Opus river actually a good example of not superbly recorded track but i, I still selected it uh, because the guitars here is charming vocal with backing vocals and overall music is great and this model de delivers it nicely with uh, proper emotions and so on and uh, actually you you will hear that this track is not superbly recorded it's not bad in terms of record quality but also far from superior and you will hear that but in this case you know i'm okay with that because it's still sounding great and actually not perfect record i think it's kind of homage by opus uh, to the old classical uh, progressive rock uh, collectives that uh, they get, drew inspiration from and i second track is something superbly recorded it's miles davis a kind of blue all blues and it's greatly recorded uh, great music uh, that sounds great with this great earphones okay kidding i'm kidding here so nice record uh, this uh, signature introduction in the beginning fast uh, keyboard part 
great uh, trumpet, uh, nice percussion and all that stuff requires technical mid frequencies, but at the same time not dry in order to sound uh, full and saturated and this model delivers that uh, pretty amazingly. Okay, and uh, treble. Treble is slightly boosted. Uh, for me it's not too much, but if you're sensitive to the treble, probably you need to keep that in mind. And uh, in this aspect, uh, uh, I must say that they are not close to my uh, uh, threshold of treble, because uh, they're not super bright, but still highlighting treble a little bit. They have a pretty good extension, uh, maybe not uh, maximum, but uh, pretty good. They have normal layering and good overtone saturation, so nice, rich uh, treble with a bit of added crispness and actually sounding surprisingly fast for the uh, dynamic drivers, even closer to the balanced armatures, but with proper attacks and decays and good resolution and not sounding too harsh, at least to my taste, and sounds really natural, giving all the uh, decays, overtones and uh, shining with... Uh, uh, timber rich instruments and uh, as a first example of uh, treble actually not the most treble saturated track but it's Vardruna Raido uh, it has a good percussions it has nicely recorded vocal that goes with overtones to the treble area and it to in order to sound natural here it requires good treble performance and this model delivers that and Second track is King Crimson, Pictures of a City, recorded at that time where, when rock bands pay attention to the record quality, good percussion, guitars, a lot of interesting stuff and uh, that requires nice treble performance and this model will give it to you. So, to summarize sound part, uh, a bit uh, uh, technical uh, natural sounding in your monitors with a bit of added, uh, uh, with a bit of added, uh, actually not emotions, with a bit of uh, added accent on the m small nuances and details in order to sound more engaging. And uh, speaking about the pairings, probably they require something at least of uh, middle segment, so I think Kane created them with uh, N3 Pro in mind as a minimum source for them and of course N6 Mark II as a like optimal source. But of course you can use like uh, Shanling M6 Pro, Fio M11 Pro, Ibasso, Hybe player, so it's a matter of what you want to achieve, but actually from middle segment and up to the entry top of the line level. Forgot to mention actually that I reviewed them with basic tips, so uh, experiment with tips, select the ones that will fit your taste. Speaking about the compressions, I will focus mainly on the dynamic drivers, uh, I will skip all hybrids, hybrid models, there were a lot of uh, a uh, lot of dynamic driver models in this range, but uh, let's start with Fios FD5. FD5 slightly reminds this model, also focused on the details, focused on the small nuances, but uh, uh, Fio is a bit less natural and a bit less organic and sometimes sounding a bit sharper than this model. Uh, Show the black hole, another good single dynamic driver model. Uh, you know, Shozy Black Hole stands aside from everything else because they are almost open, giving a bigger stage, more diffuse sound, at the same time less tight on low frequencies and a bit less focused on the detailization, but still really charming. And probably the closest rival here, one of the closest, it's Dunu Zen, but Dunu Zen has more bass and a bit less focus on the resolution. They have good resolution, but they don't focus that tiny details as much as this model do. And actually, no, Shozi a bit... Oh, sorry, not Shozi, of course. Uh, Dunu Zen is a bit closer to typical V-shaped signature. Not V-shaped, typical, but closer. And this model is a bit less highlighting base and a bit more focusing on the small details and nuances. 
So, roughly speaking, you know, I'd prefer probably Duno Zen for some kind of uh, pop music, for electronic, for fun genres. And this model, actually, it's also really fun, but it's that type of uh, fun that is um, more typical for the classical music, for jazz, for all that, like, more audiophilic, probably, genres. But, of course, they also really good with many other genres. And another model actually reminds a little bit this one, not in terms of uh, design and actually not in terms of sound, in terms of materials. It's uh, Campfire Audio Atlas. Atlas is more bassy with uh, bigger bass with more sense of uh, big uh, speakers playing low frequencies and with uh, a bit uh, less defined treble than here and on the mids they are more or less close but uh, uh, bass is main point of difference here and uh, actually another campfire audio model lira 2 lira is second lira is a bit more fun also in terms of signature more more common in terms of tuning so oh wow almost 16 minutes of talking about the sound that was really long so if you make it to this part thank you for listening and of course thank you for your attention and have a nice day